Hi there, my name is Emma and I'm with Brush Strokes Tustin. Today I'll be teaching you how to make this adorable little wooden sign. Each of these signs are hand cut out just for you, so we really hope you enjoy. Thank you so much for purchasing one of our mobile paint kits and I appreciate you supporting my small business. So a few things before we get started. This is acrylic paint, which means it's permanent. It will stain your clothes. So if you've got an apron, go ahead and throw one of those on. Maybe wear an old t-shirt. If you've got long sleeves, I recommend rolling those up. And I want you to prep the surface you're painting on by putting down some newspaper, maybe butcher paper, um, anything to cover the table that you'll be working on because we want to make sure your house stays nice and clean. Your paint kit should have come with some paint, brushes, um, a napkin, a plate to put on paint, and um, one of these wood circles, and also a ribbon. So with that, I think we can go ahead and get painting. Okay, so I've got all my supplies laid out in front of me. I've got this sample here so you can compare it. I have got my paint. You can use whatever you want to scoop out your paint. Um, I would use maybe a plastic knife or something plastic so you can just wipe it off in between scooping out your paint, but I would go ahead and put that on your plate. Um, I'm using a small sp uh, plate just for the sake of space in this video, but yours will be a little bit bigger. Try to spread them out so you have room to mix your colors very, very easily. I also have some water over here. You can use a plastic cup, paper cup, mason jar, anything you want just to have water to rinse your brush off in between colors. So with that, we can go ahead and get started. Uh, I am going to take my biggest brush and I want this background to have kind of a barnyard effect where I can see the brown in between the brown and white. So I'm actually going to be taking some white and then I'm going to dip my brush in the water and I'm going to take that and use that on my wood. So I'm gonna get water and white, doesn't really matter the order, but you can see I can still see the wood through my brush strokes and that's kind of the effect that I'm going for. If you want it to be completely solid white, that's totally fine, different effect, completely up to you. Um, but you're just going to, if you want to be able to see it through, you're gonna take little bits of water, ooh, big chunk of paint, little bits of water, and you wanna make sure you're going with the grain. You've got your two holes at the top, right? That's where we're gonna put our loops later on, so those are nice and at the very, very top. And I'm going up and down with that grain, the grain of the wood, um, which should be going from top to bottom, this is the top and then the opposite would be the bottom. I'm not worrying about painting the sides of this. I'm gonna have it have an unfinished side, but you can paint the sides if you would like to. So let me go ahead and maybe get a little bit more white and water. I just wanna paint with the grain. So go ahead, paint the whole thing. Do it as white as you want or as see-through as you want. So I'm gonna speed mine up a little bit. Go ahead and do yours. Okay, so once that is painted, you wanna make sure it is completely 100% dry before we do the next step. I'm gonna go and blow dry mine off with a blow dryer. Um, I would just take a break, maybe five to 10 minutes, and it should dry really, really quickly, but I'm gonna speed my process up a little bit. If you've got a blow dry dryer, feel free to um, dry it off, but I will be right back with my nice 100% dry piece of wood. So now that my wood is nice and dry, I can do the next step, which will be transferring my word onto my piece of wood. I want to grab my tracing paper and my word before I do this. And again, super, super important that it's dry. So I wanna make sure I have the dark 
color of the tracing paper. If you can see, it's dark and slightly more dull. This is shinier and more gray. You can see the difference. I want the dark side on the wood. Super, super important because that's where the transfer is. It's transfer paper. So if you do it the wrong way, nothing will transfer. And that will be very, very sad and you'll have to redo it. Um, so I'm going to lay it down right in the middle. Make sure it's nice and centered as well as I can do. Let's see. That looks good to me. Um, and then I will grab a pen. I recommend a pen over a pencil. It's got a more consistent, hard, fine point that'll really push the transfer material into your piece of wood. So I recommend grabbing any pen, doesn't matter what color, anything like that. Could be a gel glittery pen, doesn't matter. Um, and I wanna start outlining the welcome. Now, you wanna make sure you're going as close as possible to this edge. You wanna be very, very slow and very careful, but you do wanna make sure that you're outlining the outside of your letter. You're not just going once in the middle, you're going along all of the separate edges like you're doing bubble letters. So I'm going to go very, very carefully. Um, you can pause this video. I'm probably going to speed up my process, but um, go ahead again, right along the outside on either side so you have some space to fill it in like bubble letters. So I will go get tracing. Okay, I'm done tracing, but make sure you get the insides of all of the little letters, these two O's, the L, and the two E's, super important. So for the great reveal, voila, beautiful. So it's not perfect, but I can make it a little bit better with my smallest paintbrush. So I am going to grab my paint, I'm gonna switch it around to my black, and then I will go ahead and just fill it all in. Um, you wanna be very careful, use small amounts of paint. While I'm not using my big brush, it is in the water. I don't want it to dry out while I'm using my smallest brush, but I'm going to start to very carefully fill in. I'm going to start from left to right, ever so carefully filling all the letters in. So I'm probably going to speed mine up, but if you wanna pause it and fill yours in, you go ahead and do that. Okay, so I am done tracing. You might have noticed I dipped my water or my brush in water a few times. That's because my paint's been out overnight, so it's kind of gunky um, and a little bit dried out. So that's why I did that. I don't necessarily recommend it. You can do it maybe once or twice, but it does make your paint a little bit more gray. So you might need to do multiple coats. You can try it if you want to, but go very lightly on the water if that's something you saw me do and wanted to try. So I'm going to throw my brush in the water I'm not going to use that for a little bit, and I'm gonna start on my flowers. So let me rotate so we have in view the colors I'll be using. I can get my big brush again, make sure it's nice and dried off, and I can start with these flowers down here. Now, these pinks are not just solid pink, they are more peach, so I can grab some red and I can take some of my yellow and also mix in some white. So it's more of a peach color. So for these, you want to very carefully do little 
arch half circles in a circle. So I'm making a bunch of little half circles in the direction of a circle. And I um, was trying to show you the shape, so I left some open spots, but you're just doing these little tiny arch shapes. And maybe I'll show you one here again. It's like a little, little arch creating a circle. Um, and that's what's gonna create the petal effect. And like me, if you wanna go back in with some white, if you kind of lost those arch shapes, you certainly can. So it's just a bunch of little arches in a circle. And that's pretty much most of these flowers. Now you don't have to copy this exact pattern. Um, I probably will just to keep it consistent, but um, it's not necessary. So I'm just starting with some arch shapes in a circle. I'm pretty much making an imperfect circle. And then I can grab some white and make more art shapes and overlap it. And that'll give me just a little bit more dimension in my circle. Now I'll wipe my brush off a little bit and I will grab some white, but because I still have some pink on my brush, it's gonna make a light pink, or you can just start off with a whole new separate pile of light pink. I'm going to do another one of these little arch circles right next to that guy. Um, I can make it more white if I want to. That was very light, light pink. Um, and then I'll do another one over here. Yeah, and a bunch of tiny little lines to create a circle. And if you can't see any lines, you can overlap it with more. That's all we're doing is overlapping these um, circle lines. Bunch of little arches. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, maybe let's throw in another pink flower. I might do one over here. Replace one of these guys with another one of these. So I'll just do one more over there. If I wanna grab a darker shade or a lighter shade, we're just overlapping these circles and they're really, really not perfect at all. So I can wipe my brush off. You could also rinse it off. I'm just gonna wipe it off. So there's still a little bit of pink. I kind of like when my colors bleed together. Um, and I am going to grab some, um, maybe some white. So this is gonna be a little bit more white. I'll do these white flowers here. So for these daisies, the side that's closest to the pink is gonna be shorter. So I'm gonna do a tiny short line. I'm gonna do three tiny short lines. And then on this side, I'm gonna do three longer lines. Now let me grab a little bit of yellow so you can see that more. So three short tiny lines, and then three longer lines. That's giving a little bit more dimension. So these are coming towards us. So it's being shortened in our eye and these are going away. So let me do that again on this side. I'll do three short lines and then three longer lines. Okay, so we've got that one. Um, I don't think I need a daisy up here. Maybe I'll do another one of these circle flowers down here. I'm having a hard time seeing it, so I might add a little bit of yellow. You can see how messy this is. It doesn't have to be Perfect. You can add any of these colors to any of these flowers. Now I'll switch a little bit to this darker yellow and I'll start making those circle flowers in the darker yellow. I'll do one in this corner. Uh, maybe one down here. I'm almost just tapping a little bit of that color on there. Now for these, you can either, for the yellow ones, go lighter and add a little bit more white. Again, just dotted line in a circle, or I can grab a little bit of brown and start to go in with some browns to mix it up a little bit if I wanted to. 
there you go, we've got some brown, makes it slightly different. I'll add some more circles over here. Maybe lighten this one up a little bit so it's yellow. And maybe I'll add a daisy over there, kind of overlapping. So I know it doesn't look like much, it really needs that green, um, those highlights and some centers. So let me wipe my brush off and let's make some leaves. So I'm gonna take this green and I really wanna mix in some of this yellow here to dull it down a little bit. It's gonna be a lot of that yellow and some of that green. I probably went too, too much with the green at first. So it's gonna be a lot of this yellow and some green. I can add some brown if I want even more dull. Maybe even more yellow. Awesome, so I've got a lot more dulled down green because this green has a lot of blue in it. I can add a tiny bit of white if I want to brighten it up a little bit. So what I used to get mine was mostly yellow, a little bit of green, some brown, and a little bit of white. So once I've got that color, I can start making almond shapes with my medium brush. I'm gonna have some that are just one by themselves and some that are in multiples of two. Wherever there's like an awkward space, like maybe there's some space down here. I wanna add one. Um, I might leave that for um, some of these guys. Maybe there's some space down here. So it'll, it'll depend on how you shaped your shaped your flowers. I just go wherever I think it might be necessary. Like see how there's a big space up here? That's perfect for a little leaf. And I'm just doing two strokes, doing one and another. They're two curved lines, curved lines. They're pointing on either end. Not too crazy. Okay, so that's a good start for my, or my leaves. I also wanna add some of these longer uh, sprig leaves. So I'm gonna go on either end and just do a straight line. I'll just do a tiny one on that end, a bigger one on that end. Again, it just depends on your space. And then I can just add some teeny lines coming out of it, almost like they're leaves. It's got a big chunk over there. So I'm just taking my brush and I'm flicking it away to create kind of a leaf look. Now that I've done that, I'm noticing some more space that I could add leaves to. This is kind of barren over here. Um, and I wanna go and do another level on these. I'm not going to rinse my brush off. I'm just gonna grab some white and a little bit more of that yellow and I can very carefully go over. And you might wanna actually switch to your smallest brush for this. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to my smallest brush, just so I can have a little bit more control. So I've got my white and yellow, and then I had some green on that brush. So white, yellow, and a little bit of green. And I can just go over each of these to give a little pop of color. Just giving it a little extra dimension, I'm just smushing a little bit of that color on top. I'm just tapping a little bit of it along the leaf, on all of my leaves. And you can see I'm not, you know, choosing a specific side, doing anything too crazy, nothing too fancy over here. And you can also do the opposite, take some darker green, and kind of line the outside of these. This is a very bluish green, so you don't want to do too, too much. But if you want to, you can see the difference between the top and the bottom. It adds a little bit more contrast, but definitely not necessary. Now, I think the last thing we're going to do is the centers of these flowers. There's two types of centers you can do. Um, for the daisies, I would just do plain circle centers. 
just a little circle in brown. So I think I only have two or three daisies. Just a little circle. There's my last daisy. And then for these other flowers, I'm going to start to tap in a circle right in the middle with my brown and my smallest brush. I'm just tapping right in the middle. Then once I have that, I can do a few taps outside that circle to act like the pollen's kind of spreading. So I'm tapping in a, a circle, all the pieces are together. And then I can just do a few taps a little bit further out to look like the pollen's kind of spreading around. It's not so even and perfect. So I'm just tap, tap, tapping in a circle with my smallest brush and just solid brown. And then I'm tapping a little bit outside. So anything that doesn't really look like a flower, this is going to make it look a lot more like a flower. So I'll do my top ones, tapping in a circle, and a few taps outside. And then that will be it. Almost done. And then this is the last one. Now, if you've got a Sharpie and you messed up on any of the letters, you can go back and kind of try to fix the edges with the Sharpie. You can also go back and erase once it's completely dry. If you have some of the tracing paper left, um, any of the tracing left, you can go back and erase it. I'm going to make sure I clean both of these brushes off with warm water and soap. And then the very, very last thing we can do is we can take our ribbon um, it's a little tricky to get the ribbon through the holes, but what I like to do is I like to roll the very end of the ribbon up so it gets a little bit thinner. You can see that, I rolled it up. Then you wanna go from the back side to the front side. Let's see if I can get this on the first try. Because the holds need to be kind of small so the ribbon doesn't fall through so it is a little bit tricky and what i've done before is if you're having a really hard time and you just can't seem to get it um you can get something small like a paper clip or some sort of pin and stick it through so i'm going to do that again on this side i'm going to roll it up nice and small, just rolling it into itself so I can get almost a point. And then I'm going to try to push it through from the back side to the front side. Oops, got unrolled. See, it's just a little bit tricky. There we go. All right, so I've got both of those through. And I'm gonna pull this a little bit more and just tie it in a knot. You might wanna double knot it. I'll just do one for now. Leave a little bit of space. And if you don't want this to show, you can um, do this on the back side. I kind of like how it has a little bit of ribbon. I'm gonna pull this through so I can just, makes it a little bit easier for me. Leave a little bit of ribbon, pull it to where I want it, and pull it back. There you go. Got your cute little sign, make sure you let it dry. Um, and that's it. Thank you so much for tuning in and supporting my small business. We hope to see you soon. Thank you.